It brings out the textures in the All right. All right. I'm going to say it one more time. Then I'm done. Maybe. The sound design is absolutely insane. Notice anything different? Hey, the background might be different, but I still got the sparkling water. I'll say that much. Editor reacts. Let's get to it. All right, so today we're looking at the art of cinematic filmmaking from Elliot Grafton, I, I believe. As an editor, I'm gonna break down the color grading, the structure, the way it's put together, you know, classic editing stuff. So with that being said, let's check it out. Filmmaking isn't just about capturing moments. For me, it's about feeling something, becoming completely absorbed in the process. In this video, I'm gonna show you the behind the scenes look at how I find inspiration, how I film, color grade, and use sound effects in post-production. And hopefully you'll get some inspiration from my story of how I've grown from a freelancer to co-founding a global production company and the projects we now work on. Yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Five years time, I want to be filming full time, I want to be traveling the world and I want to be working for tourism companies. I just want to be filming and I want to be traveling with my mates and experiencing new cultures. And... Alright, that was pretty sick. Man, yeah, that's def the amount of production quality you can definitely see is there because, yeah, you can just tell that he knows his idea when putting together a project is very professionally that's the word professionally done and i just want to point out these angles are pretty sick filmmaking isn't just about capturing moments for me it's about feeling something you'll notice for about the first um oh my gosh there's something in my eye oh you'll notice for like the first six or seven seconds he started off with the shot of the plane, but he kept that sound effect going over the rest of the clips for a few more seconds. Filmmaking isn't just about capturing moments. Because obviously he was showing the plane, it gives it some depth in the edit, and it's definitely a unique creative decision to implement that you know, throughout, which I have done before, in many occasions, it just gives it a cool sounding, uh, atmospheric type of sound. Essentially an L cut, in other words. Color grade and use sound effects in post-production. And hopefully you'll get some inspiration from my story. One thing to do with this, obviously the, the filming and the shots are great. And the color grading too. Uh, it's got that film layered type of grade to it. It's a little bit flat, which makes it look kind of cinematic. But the main thing that I'm picking up here is the very detailed sound design, which is really important when editing. And he's got, to make it more dramatic, he's added hits, you know, dramatic hits throughout. And hopefully you'll get some inspiration. And you'll hear it from time to time, which just gives it that uh, intense feel. From a freelancer to co-founding a global production company and the projects we now work on. Yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and then it all goes silent and he's added like this, he's lowered the scale from the initial clip just as a creative design. Obviously it's all silent. So you're focusing solely on the clip itself and what they're saying. And another indication that is subtle but is good to pay attention to when adding clips is the fact that he shrunk the clip like that and it's kind of framed tells you that it's not the actual footage for the video itself it shows you that it's like b-roll in a sense and it's not him actually now recording itself and then afterwards you hear the music before and we get going into the next section so let's continue on. And I want to be traveling with my mates and experiencing new cultures and... Inspiration is the foundation of any creative process. It's what pushes our imagination and pushes us to innovate. 
In my journey, I've found inspiration comes in various forms from architecture, music, paintings, and movement. But in recent years, I've found there are two consistent sources that keep coming back to me. The world of cinema has been a constant source of inspiration for me, and in particular, June, and in large part because of cinematographer Greg Fraser. I love his style and his ability to make you feel something through a single frame. To create these expansive worlds is something I strive for in every project, but it's not just contemporary films that inspire me. When I was young, Peter Pan opened my mind to new worlds. Neverland wasn't just a place, it was a feeling, a sense of adventure which has left a lasting mark on my approach to filmmaking. But at the core of it all is nature. Well, then, yeah, no, he's definitely keeping up the pace as far as the uh, professional design and editing and stuff like that. So he did this very quick where he was showing the art at the beginning, this quick match cut, which simply put, he just lined up the eye line of each person so that each cut would match perfectly and that gives you that type of match cut. When you're match cutting faces, you wanna match the eyes because that's what a person looks at first when they're when they're paying attention to a person or a face. There's this effect that he's doing that looks pretty sick. I think he did it at the beginning shot as well where the edges are blurred and the center is not, obviously. But it has that, I know there's a lens, I can't think of it right now. Uh, if you got any camera people here, go ahead and leave a comment. But there's a specific lens that pretty much makes the blur look like this, right? And it looks sick, but there's also post-production stuff and editing that you can add as an overlay on top. Obviously, I believe he did here, and I just think it looks sick. I love using that type of blur. Woo! And I also agree with everything that he's saying. I've, I've mentioned it before in some of my previous videos that all creativity, you know, is, is inspired from somewhere. And it's just tweaked here and there, making it its own unique way. And yeah, I completely agree with that, with, with everything that he's talking about here. And once again, you got this in-frame type of shot, but it is a B-roll type of clip because he's showing snapshots from the movie. So, as far as I know, that's what I think he's doing here. The lasting mark on my approach to filmmaking. Yeah, the sound design here is definitely on another level. He's always adding ambient sounds with everything he's showing, whether that's the Peter Pan clips. Open my mind to new worlds. Neverland wasn't just a place. It was a feeling, a sense of adventure. Or like the, the waterfall going through everything that he's talking about or the b-roll that he's showing all have sound to it which gives it depth throughout the project and it makes it sound really nice there's something about nature that pulls me into a flow state where everything else fades away It's in those moments where I'm in the middle of a dust storm in Africa in 50 degree heat, standing in the quietest place I've ever been, surrounded by icebergs the size of buildings, or facing down the chaos of a big storm. Nature is what I love the most, and it's where the stories I tell truly come alive. It's in these challenging environments that I feel most alive as a filmmaker. The raw power of nature demands my full attention, and it pushes me to my creative limits. This connection to the natural world has become a defining characteristic of my work, influencing everything from shot composition to the emotional tone of my films. Yeah, man, I mean, every, the, he's just added so much sound design and I don't even know, I could talk about it, this whole entire project probably, but you know, I don't want to be annoying about it. But yeah, with every, if you just pay attention, every single clip has that ambient sound or, or something to it that gives it what you want to hear when you see that clip. And yeah, I mean, I haven't really touched on it too much, but the color grading is absolutely incredible. I think at the start, I saw that he was using DaVinci. He'll probably show that later on. Wait, hold on. All right. So yeah, he'll show the color grading and the sound design at the end. So stick around and see what he uses. But yeah, the color grading, spot on. It gives it a unique color that shows you that it was actually graded and not corrected. Look, 
Shooting is where the creative process reflects great planning. Okay. While us okay, actually, I want to... Hold on. Shooting is where... The format he's got going here with his style is pretty, uh, pretty cool. The fact that, you know, obviously it's split up into different chapters. The numbering system here uh, that he's got going looks, looks pretty sick, especially with the font and just how he's titling this. Personally, I really like it a lot. Where the creative process reflects great planning. While I started with a run and gun style, over the recent years I've learned the magic of filmmaking isn't just about being in the moment. It's about solid preparation, and I much prefer a curated approach. I love the creative and collaborative process, scouting locations, working with talent, curating wardrobe and props. This is what I now focus on since co-founding my production company, Air Films. We are intentional about crafting each frame because of all the elements that make up the shot, enhance production quality and the impact it has not only on our projects, but on our client campaigns. I'm proud to say that I've been able to keep my creative skill set well-rounded, being able to pilot FPV, fly a drone, film underwater and handheld has put me in a really strong position for client work. This versatility has allowed me to push boundaries with every project we do. I get a thrill out of working in remote locations, chaotic environments and limited resources. Yeah, you're hearing it. He's adding subtle bass drops or, or, or hits. Limited resources. You can hear it and the music as well is very cinematic, gradually getting more and more tense, I guess you would say. And, and yeah, the way the overall tone and the way it's put together fits, fits what he's trying to go at here. And the pacing of the, the clips as well, the way it's positioned. Yeah, here and there you'll hear hits and stuff like that. And that's just keeping the tension while you're watching throughout. And it will be positioned in a way that it's when a cut happens, which makes it more dramatic, obviously. When it comes to gear, adaptability is key. While I used to rely heavily on the 24-70 to 2.8 lens, I now choose my equipment based on specific needs of each project. I'm super lucky to have the flexibility to use some of my favorite lenses like the 50mm and 35mm primes to achieve a particular look. In underwater shoots, I still prefer the Sony A7S because it's nice and compact. My settings for underwater are always 120 frames per second so I can capture a more fluid motion of the environment and it gives me way more flexibility in post. When it comes to capturing vast landscapes, I rely heavily on the D. That was pretty sick. Way more flexibility in post. When it comes Wow. No, yeah. Some of this, you can definitely tell he's, uh, he enjoys what he's doing and he takes it seriously with overall production quality because some of these shots are really sick. To capturing vast landscapes, I rely heavily on the DJI Mavic 3 Cine. It's proven itself time and time again to be incredibly reliable, especially in extreme conditions. One time in Greenland, I had to fly about six kilometers away from a glacier carving. And because of the cold weather, I only had 30 minutes of flight time. We ended up getting some amazing shots and I was stoked with the footage. For more high-end shots, I use the DJI Inspire 3. On the i3, I have the ability to swap lenses and this gives me the flexibility to change a feeling of each shot. This is something smaller drones just can't offer. The music he's got going here is very ambient and it fits because he's just he's kind of communicating about the stuff he likes to use and you know there are a lot of nature type of clips going on here because he's a videographer for that and so it's very uh, ambient in the background and you kind of I mean you notice it if you're paying attention but it flows nicely with the video to where you don't really realize it unless you're really uh you know trying to think about it we've also invested in a cine lifter for fpv work and it's been an absolute game changer for us the footage is captured on the sony fx6 and it really gives that high production look this drone is an absolute workhorse every shot feels super cinematic and it's never let me down even in extreme conditions like in africa or in the desert Timing and light play crucial roles in our process and they're often the most challenging aspects to manage. We're constantly monitoring the weather conditions, sun direction and cloud coverage because all of these elements have a dramatic effect on our footage. 
Each project requires a unique approach. For instance, when filming icebergs in Greenland, we were faced with a constant battle with fog and direct sunlight. The fog beautifully diffused the light, creating a moody atmosphere. On clear days, the sun overexposed the icebergs and this washed out all the details I wanted to capture. For landscape shots, particularly on mountains or rocky terrains, we often aim for golden hour. This fleeting period creates a soft, warm light that brings out the textures in the land. All right. All right. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to say it one more time and then uh, now I'm done. Maybe. The sound design is absolutely insane. That's it. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. Climbing and light play. So you'll notice it was somewhat calm. And then as soon as he got into where he was in the snow and stuff, he he added another impact. And the music cut as well. So you're truly only hearing the ambience and the sound effects and sound design behind it. And the cutting, the pacing of it started getting more, started getting quicker crucial roles in our process and they're often the most challenging aspects to manage. We're constantly monitoring especially with the hurricane which gives you that tense dramatic feeling when it's cutting that pacing and also the sound design behind it. Brings out the textures in the landscape you don't normally see during the day. It's these details between light, timing and environment that often define the mood and the quality of our final product. This is the perfect time to introduce color grading. This All is actually right. the most common question I get asked. Good color grading coupled with footage shot in great lighting will improve the look of your film and it will do most of the heavy lifting for you. So try to focus on the time of day that you shoot. So I do all my color grading in DaVinci Resolve and the part of my process begins with applying our custom air films LUTs, but that's just the foundation. The real artistry comes in fine tuning and this is where DaVinci node based system really- Okay. Yeah, so it is uh, Da Vinci. Like I said earlier, you can tell that they are graded and they're given a look based on obviously how you wanted to, to color grade it. And you can tell that it is supposed to be that way. He shines. A game-changing feature I recently discovered in DaVinci is the Film Look Creator tool. This tool is honestly amazing and it's a godsend for creators to easily achieve that coveted cinematic feel. It allows us to adjust elements like film grain, halation, bloom effects, and much more than that. Film grain adds a subtle texture to your image, mimicking the look of actual film stock. It can lend warmth and a character to your digital footage, making it feel way more organic. Halation simulates the way light behaves on film, creating a really soft glow around bright areas. Yeah, yeah, that gives it that dreamy type of effect. Just a little bit of, you know, info for you guys. Uh, so like if you're working on wedding videos and stuff like that, usually I would add the ones I have worked on in the past. For the more cinematic portions of it, you add that kind of effect over the highlights and it gives it gives it that dreamy feel, especially when you're watching it. This can add a super dreamy, nostalgic quality to your shots. Lastly, but hey, most that's what I just said. Sculpting the image, tweaking exposure, contrast, and white balance to achieve the desired mood. And I think this is where years of experience comes into play. It's not going to happen overnight. I usually just experiment all the time with my grades, see how far I can push it, and just really try to create something unique and special. Yeah. Here we go. What I've mentioned multiple times, we're about to find out his process behind it. Let's find out. Sound design is a hidden hero in every film. I believe that great sound design should often go unnoticed until it's missing because they have the power to set the mood of an entire film. Without sound effects, the story can feel flat and lifeless. All right. Environmental and atmospheric sounds are key to making a scene come alive. If I'm shooting in a wild and rugged environment, I want the audience to also feel that intensity. Or if I want to build tension in a story, I might choose to use rhythmic hits to cue a sense of increasing power or drama. I noticed that. I noticed that earlier on. Yeah, the way he's explaining this and how he's explaining what he does is is really sick. How he's putting it together and it's a unique way of how he's he's taking the approach of 
showing what he does here. Obviously, we had that effect earlier on where you have the scrolling sound wave. You kind of just key out the background and then you can position it how you want. Being able to control a viewer's emotion through sound Yeah, effects. look at that. Man. Why I spend so much time perfecting sound design of a film. And I can't emphasize enough how crucial this part of the process is. It'll really make your film come alive. I typically layer multiple sound effects. It's not uncommon for me to have about 10 or 20 layers of sound. Another question I always get asked is, where do I get my sound effects? There's multiple places you can get sound effects, but for me, I prefer to go to Artlist. They have a massive library and it's incredibly well organized. You can just type in what sound effect you want and it will most likely be there. I was about to say, are we about to get a sponsor or, but let's see if you mentioned some other places. Yeah, from whooshes, atmospheric hits, pretty much anything you could want, they will have. I also like to download them or put them in folders and have a really big collection so I can go back and pull them into my editing timeline. So for future projects, you can just go back and have some of your sound effects. You tend to use the same sound effects that you really like for each film, but I think it's super important. He's even got sound design for the scrolling and clicking throughout the whole section. Man, this guy's detailed. Important to try different things. So that's where Artlist is so good because they have such a big variety of sound effects. So usually my process when I'm downloading the sound effects, I'll drop them into my timeline and then start layering from there. It's about tweaking and adjusting until the sound feels really powerful that I'm strategically yep. continuing to drive the story forward. The great thing about Artlist is how flexible it is. You have unlimited downloads, a lifetime license, and new sound effects are added regularly. Because of the freedom and flexibility Artlist offers, I've been able to create a sense of realism for viewers because the film feels more tangible and believable. So if sound design is something you I'm want to I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for him to say it. Thank you, Artlist, for this sponsor. Let's see if he does. But, I mean... Besides all that, yeah, he 100% uh, has the liberty to do so because, uh, yeah, the sound design that he's done in this whole video, you know, I said I would stop saying it, but we're literally in the sound design section, so whatever. What he's done with the video definitely grants him access to talk about, you know, whatever he wants with whatever he wants and get whatever sponsor he wants. I mean, if I was Artless, I would want to sponsor somebody that makes projects like this as well when it comes to sound design and, you know, talk about that. Ask it in your cinematic videos. I highly recommend diving into their library and creating your own collections. I've used them for years and they really support our community. So you can check them out with the link I've provided in the description. I absolutely love the whole process of filmmaking from that first idea to the final cut. At the end of the day, it's about making people feel something, whether it's a big brand video or a passion project. We really want our films to leave a lasting impression on people and show them something new about our world. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I've been saying that for a long time, especially with editing and post-production. You probably know about that as well. The whole point of editing and filmmaking, just production, is to make the person feel a certain way after watching that project. Whether that's it's a funny project or it's a more serious, but portraying that emotion that you want them to overall experience. You want somebody to experience something when they're watching a project that's been put together with the art of production. So I completely agree. That's what really gets us through those tough shoots and keeps us trying new things. Filmmaking is such a wild ride and it's not easy, but it's worth it when you capture that perfect shot for you or tell a story that really connects with people. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of the journey with us. Alright. What? Go on, eh? Oh, yeah. See ya. <laughs> whoa, whoa. I didn't mean to restart. The video itself is about the art of cinematic filmmaking and this project itself definitely was an art and I really enjoyed watching it. Overall, you can tell that he took his time putting it together and really focused because taking your time and focusing are two different things. If you focus and take your time, that's when you can create a really well put together project like this with the sound design, the pacing, the subtle 
effects, the color grading, everything in this makes you feel how he wants you to experience it. And so overall, you can tell that he focused and took his time on this and really structured it out and built it the way he enjoyed doing. So, Elliot Grafton, I really enjoyed this project. That was my breakdown of this video. And if you wanna leave some more suggestions in the comments, feel free to do so. If not, and you just wanna watch another breakdown that I've done, you can click over here and check out another one of those, another video. And with that being said, I'll see you at the next edit.